OK, Al. So, we've now got a new version of Windows incoming. <laughs> yes. Yes, you know. <laughs> it's, that, it's that time of the decade again. <laughs> And I, I'm I'm not sure how I feel about it, if I've been honest with you. Mm. I'm quite comfortable with Windows 10 for one thing. Mm. My own opinion of Windows 10, it, it feels like a, a step up, you know, from what I've experienced in the past. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to do more with it, mm. but I just kind of feel I've been able to do more with it than I have other kind of uh, versions of Windows. Maybe just a sign of the times more than anything about, you know, Windows. But what, what I've seen about it, number one, it reminds me of an Apple UI. <laughs> yes. There's no doubt about that. Mm. And maybe that's the, the way they've tried to have it come across in some of the marketing material. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But even the, the presentation and announcement for Windows 11, that really did come across as an Apple presentation. Mm. It was almost a little bit cringy, how much mm. so. I'm not sure if I liked it very much. It was, <laughs> it was what it was. Mm. You know, it it was what it was, and um, they seem to be obviously focused on productivity features like screen snap, yeah, uh, allowing you to resume where you left off. So if you you know mm. either I don't know, it was moving your computer around in terms of your uh, laptop, and also maybe something to do with the account, the Microsoft account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you basically come back to the same kind of screen layout and all that sort of thing. So that obviously that's a step up. Yeah, you obviously going to have this new UI. So we'll see how that pans out. Mm. It looks super simple. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it because of that. <laughs> mm. Mm. It was too simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it it integrates with Game Pass, which is mm -hmm. to me absolutely no surprise. Yeah, uh, it's obviously not just an app now. You can take the analogy with I guess what they're doing with PlayStation Five and you know the PlayStation Store. Mm. You know, again, it might be just a visualization. You know, layer. Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but for the gamers, what they have is auto HDR, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is, I think is an Xbox feature, and obviously direct storage. Yeah, yeah. As well as obviously Game Pass, which is you know clearly for gamers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Al, I don't I don't know if you've been following this, but I mean, you know, what do you think of the new version of Windows? Yeah, there's some interesting stuff. Like I saw something around being able to install Android um, yeah. kind of kind of things as well. But uh, interestingly, it was um, they must have done a deal with Amazon, strangely, because it was the Amazon App Store and not Play, the Google Play App Store that was on there. So <clears throat> it, it, it had things like you could do things with Android, which are quite interesting. Um, direct storage was, was massively interesting as well. Um, thankfully, they've... Uh, oh, yeah, there was initially some controversy around... It's being Windows only, fe Windows 11 only feature, uh, but I think that's kind of opened up, which is which is quite nice. Uh, back to kind of Windows 10, and I think the other thing that was of interest was a there was some kind of security module. You might need a, a actually yeah, security the, card or something to, yeah, to make it work. TPM 2.0 mm. in secure boot. Yeah, so that was the only other restrict. That was the that was a sort of restrictive kind of angle, but otherwise seemed okay. Yeah, you know, like you say, the fancy UI um, doesn't really doesn't really work for me but you know no doubt they'll have features to kind of turn it back to like a <laughs> I, I do it with quite a lot of the os's i disable all the um yeah the kind of fancy features the transparency features because it's just eating up ram but, you know what well, i don't need it <laughs> I, yeah, don't, yeah, I don't need true. it to be transparent <laughs> true true i mean even, even on you know because I'm, I'm very comfortable with windows 10 i'm very productive mm. on it and mm. even with that i use this thing called fences mm. from um i think it's star doc you know software mm. And really, in reality, all that really does, right, is makes your Windows 10 OS look like Windows 311. Because <laughs> you have these kind of like set windows, and they're, tra they're kind of transparent, but you have set windows where you can place icons. So I've got one for games, I've got one for creativity, uh -huh. I've got one for engineering, you know, all of that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can imagine what I'm going to do with Windows 11 when I upgrade to it. <laughs> I'm gonna make it look like Windows three one one. But that's what I do with all my, um, yeah. Whether it was Windows seven, eight, ten, I always kind of remove all those extra fancy, fancy features that you don't really need. Yeah, yeah. You know, dumb it down a bit, you know, because I because I want to do pro productivity. I want to do, you know, the the gaming side of things without having to. It's just not it's not a necessary feature. 
it is nice to look at but I'm only going to look at it temporarily whilst I'm going through browsing windows or, or kind of moving from one to the other. And, and even then, I'm not looking at the edge. I'm looking at the content. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true as well. <laughs> I'm not going to upgrade straight away, I've got to be honest, because I'm, mm. I'm, I'm actually loathed to basically uh, have to set up my PC for mm-hmm. a new OS. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it might basically upgrade quite smoothly. I might be able to translate or transfer a lot of what I have mm. and make it feel the same. I'm not a big fan, especially with OS is basically um, being an early adopter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a hassle. I mean, you you know, you've got mm. your daily driver machine. You want it just to function and work the way you want it to function and work. Yeah. I'm not here to beat or test anything for, you know, for anybody. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and, and I think the only other thing that I noted was some better integration to Windows Hello was the other thing. Um, yeah, So yeah. It, works, it works with more... more um, uh, more features, you know, more webcams, more things like that. So um, I think that's that's the additional benefit that you get from it. Yeah, I think the security thing is quite interesting. Mm. TPM um, two point zero. What I understand about it, it's a way for you to securely hold an encryption key. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and I think they use the same sort of technology for um, crypto. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you can line a module to basically an account. Mm-hmm. And secure boot as well. If I understood that, it's about basically making sure things that boot up are signed properly. Mm. If an OS is starting up, right, you know, it's got to be signed. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Something along those lines, I believe. As security becomes more and more required and more needed, Mm. yeah, you can understand why Microsoft would do it. it. It makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, I, I totally understand that. The interesting thing is is that whether the there's enough, you know, you can have, I think you can have TPMs on both, you know, software versions as yeah. well as hardware versions, but I suspect the ones that if you want it to be booting up instantly with it on, then you need a hardware version. But I think it would be interesting to see how that um, kind of evolves and whether that will even be available um, from, from vendors and, and stuff like that. Yeah, the software is the firmware, like the BIOS. Hmm. And then, yeah, there's TPM modules. Mm. None of this is new technology. It's been around for mm. a while. And it's just mm. that, you know, it's not being really enforced. I don't see Microsoft really blocking people who don't have a TPM or don't want to put secure boot on from upgrading, yeah. if, I, if I'm being honest. I mean, they're pushing it now. But I think, you know, I think they'll kind of backtrack. Y- yeah, yeah. It doesn't surprise me. And it, maybe, maybe what they can do is that... Um... It, it, it's probably for users that need more productivity type tasks or things like you know hooking into whether it's Google Cloud or, or the other things to, to 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 give you that added security around it, right? I'm sure there'll be, yeah, yeah, there'll be benefits around it. Yeah, yeah. But not for your you know a standard user, maybe less so. But I think you could sell them the idea that oh well, actually by doing it this way, then you're your access to to other things would be much more secure around it. Uh, you know, here's the benefits X, Y, and Z as to why. Um, I do hope they kind of move the move the dial forward a little bit on the security mm. aspect of it. I mean, that's for sure. I think you know, rather than really criticizing what Microsoft are doing, you you know, you should have, maybe we should be applauding it. Oh, we we should we should. I think because you could argue various security things can be breached over you know over time with. Um, whether it's brute force or other kind of techniques. And as things become more and more powerful, these things become much easier and easier to crack. You know, you need these kind of additional security layers in order to, you know, to avoid some of these problems. And, you know, otherwise, you can only trust, you know, what, what can you trust then out on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, you need these sorts of things to, to protect companies and individuals ultimately as you kind of use it and, and more and more people that utilize it as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I think it is important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It seems like they've basically backtracked on the whole, you know, storage thing as well for Windows mm. 10. And if you ask me, that was pretty stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to take a bit of time for people <laughs> to move off Windows 10. Yeah. It's going to take a bit yeah. of time. And then direct storage is really one of the tenants of the new generation of games hardware. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's all the, it's all the SSD. Yeah, back, back to, to the, the SSDs, SSDs right? <laughs> you know, them locking it out mm. 
locking it into Windows 11 seems, wow, really? You've got to really hold things back here. You've got to hold <laughs> things back for your own mm. platform, if you ask me. That was a silly thing about it. I thought, why would you do that? Yeah. You know, you want more yeah. people supporting this. You want more people kind of designing around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want, you know, as game engines take, you know, take advantage of, you know, the faster SSDs, if Windows 10 and Windows 11 can't, you know, if Windows 10 cannot cope with it, then sh then that is suddenly a huge, you know, a huge population of people that can't. And that that just, you know, that's just, that's just crazy. So, so thankfully they made yeah, the right and decision. And if you think about that. the synergy between Windows and Xbox, Game mm, Pass, mm, mm, you think, why would mm. you want to do that? Because, l yeah. let's be honest, right, the one advantage a PlayStation 5 has over an Xbox and a gaming PC right now is the speed of that SSD and what they're doing with it. Mm. Yeah. So, you would basically try to sabotage your own platform by <laughs> giving your competitor more of an advantage. Seems a bit ludicrous <laughs> to me. I mean, I'm, I'm scratching my head. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> they backtracked, so you know, someone's all sense. Who cares? Good for Microsoft. Yeah. Good for the Xbox, also. You know, yeah. you don't want to be held back like that. Yeah, indeed. But I mean, what I will say, I'm not going to upgrade to this anytime soon. At what point can I get a free upgrade? Mm. And I'll wait to that point and then I'll upgrade, yeah. but not before. I'm still quite happy with Windows 10. Yeah. Well, I think it was only off the back of leaks that we've seen so much information around it recently. Um, and I guess Microsoft were then forced to kind of, you know, explain themselves a bit. But, um, you know, I think, it, it, is it due, uh, you know, towards the November, December kind of period this year? I think right? so. I think so. But they're going to support Windows 10, I think, until I heard 2025. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that the free upgrades will basically expire before then, mm -hmm. if I understand it correctly. You know, I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I mean, like I said, you know, my Windows 10 is my daily driver as an OS. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really, you know, want to um, cause issues to that unless I really absolutely have to. Mm. I'm quite happy with it. I don't feel a pressing need to upgrade. I mean, how about you, Al? What are your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I'm I'm not in any rush either. And maybe what I'll do is <sighs> maybe I'll maybe I'll just do it like on my laptop or something. Uh, or one, or one, you know, one system I'll do it on, and then just play with it. And you know, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't meet what I expected to do, then I'll just reverse it back, right? You know, so I'll just play with it. For yeah, a bit. yeah, that's sensible. Yeah, but I also agree with you. You know, early adopters of these sorts of things usually quite painful. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really down for being tortured by Windows. <laughs> that's not what I'm about. <laughs> Yeah. And with that said, Al, I think it's time to end our conversation about mm. Windows 11 and move on. <laughs>